what's your opinion as we're getting ready for um for getting ready for preseason football about the the rookie class and how you think they're going to perform which which guys stand out to you now that we're getting ready for actual football well, you know, not to, you know, give you too much of a, a a Michigan, you know, pat on the back here with with hyping them up. But it seems like J.J. McCarthy is going to be a lot of fun to watch this preseason because it looks like Sam Darnold, obviously, is going to be the starting quarterback at the beginning of the season. We believe that that was going to be the case. I didn't think that that was going to change. But, you know, McCarthy is somebody who I'm really looking forward to because – by all counts, he's been playing well in practice. Okay, it's against the twos, but now we get to see him against the ones a little bit. And, and even if it's against the twos in preseason, like it's another team's backup player. So I think that that's going to be a lot of fun to watch. Obviously, how Jaden's in the mix with uh, how much he's going to play this offseason in Washington with his connection with Cliff Kingsbury, what that chemistry is going to look like. And then, you know, there's some talks with the Patriots going back to Drake May, like, hey, Joe Milton's looking better than Drake May. I, I don't I don't know about all that. You know, Joe Milton's been a pretty good practice quarterback at Michigan. He was a pretty good practice quarterback at Tennessee. It's a little bit different when we get in the game, but obviously I'm hoping the best for him. So I'd love to see him light it up. He's got one of the best arms in the NFL already, and we haven't even seen him play yet. We already know that from seeing the practice footage. So we'll see how it comes out in New England, but that's the one that I'm really looking forward to the most is that battle in New England. Can any of those guys, you know, usurp uh, uh, Jacoby Bursett or who's really going to be getting a lot of those two reps of those rookie quarterbacks in New England? Trevor Sikama, pro football focus here on the Rich Eisen Show. Um, outside of the quarterbacks, um, tell me who else you think might be a finalist for Offensive Rookie of the Year. Give me, give me, give me your best case scenario going into this season right now. I think I have to say Malik Neighbors. Right when you talk really? about wide receiver cores that okay. just desperately needed an influx of talent. I mean, that was somebody who the second Malik Neighbors was drafted, and I love Malik Neighbors. He was one of my highest graded players that we had in this class. I said, okay, there's your wide receiver one. And it's not as desperate in New York as it was in New England when you look at their receiving core, but Malik Neighbors is absolutely that number one guy there. There, To me, they're going to feed that passing attack through him even as a rookie. You go back to an LSU wide receiver that people uh, know very well, and Odell Beckham Jr., when he came in, he was able to hit the ground running in New York not too long ago. Not to make the easy parallels there, but I really do think that something like that, an over 1,000-yard season, a takeover type of a year for Malik Neighbors could be in the cards because he was basically unguardable last year while in LSU's offense, and I feel like he's still going to be able to play at a very high level despite being a rookie. So he is somebody to watch for because I think he is going to stuff the stat sheet this year. So then give me another non-top 10 wide receiver. Give me – it's that oh. – so we're taking Odunze and we're taking uh, Maserati Marv and we're taking <laughs> neighbors out of the mix. As you know, you know, second-round wide receivers are the ones that are getting pizzayed around these, these parts too or uh, wide receivers like Ayuk taken in the 20s. What do you got for me there? I, yeah, in front of I, that curve, Trevor. What do you I got? think I, I think that like now that now that I'm kind of thinking of some of those guys that weren't in the top ten, the obvious guys. You know, if Brandon Ayuk gets traded, obviously I think Ricky Pearsall becomes an option. But it's such a crowded room with a 49er, so a lot of people liked him, and I did as well. I think he's going to be able to stand out right away. I just don't think he'll have the volume with it. So the guys who I think would have the best chance volume wise, Keon Coleman in Buffalo is one who I think could be there. X receiver. Now, I don't know if they're going to run that passing offense through them, right? Because they got some good tight ends there. I think Dalton Kincaid's probably going to get the lion's share of the uh, of the offensive targets. You got Dawson Knox as well. I think they're going to get Khalil Shakir involved a lot. But Coleman still brings an element to the offense that when they say like, hey, we need a go up and get it type of a guy. We need somebody in the end zone to be able to run a fade toward the pylon, go up and and, and moss a, uh, a cornerback. I think they're going to look Coleman's way. So perhaps they get a lot of those opportunities. He gets a lot of touchdowns. Maybe that's the case. Then Xavier Leggett. I think health is the biggest thing for Leggett, but they need him, man. I mean, and I know he's already a little bit banged up in camp, which I don't love because he kind of dealt with a little bit of injuries throughout his career when he was at South Carolina. But if they get a full 17 games in a regular season from Xavier Leggett, again, he's somebody that Dave Canales has to work that passing offense through. And I'm not saying that he is Mike Evans, but Dave Canales got to work with Mike Evans last year, got to see what it's like when a big, strong receiver can move a little bit better or have more explosiveness than defenses maybe are ready to uh, to defend against. And so some of Leggett's best reps are similar in that regard. So I think Canales is going to have a couple of plays that he thought about with Mike Evans in mind last year in Tampa Bay. 
And he's going to be able to work those in with Xavier Leggett to run that passing offense through him in Carolina. So Keon Coleman, Xavier Leggett, I think those are two guys that have a good chance to get a lot of volume, maybe to be a sleeper offensive rookie of the year. Pick. Trevor Sikkim, NFL draft analyst lead, such analyst for pro football focus here on the Rich Eisen Show. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free.